previously on The Greatest Trek. We're flown from our homes in Australia to Vietnam, where we aim to motorcycle 2,000 kilometers across Vietnam from Ho Chi Minh City to Hanoi. We've purchased two motorbikes from a Swedish backpacker, whom in return gave us our first riding lesson. The next day, we rode them to the historic Cu Chi site to crawl in tunnels that had been preserved from the Vietnam War. We then set off to De Lat, a town in the central highlands of Vietnam, where we explored waterfalls, ate deer jerky, and got cozy at a go-go lounge named Envy. We've made it to day nine, and we're leaving De Lat to travel over 200 kilometers to our next destination, a town that we've almost always never been able to pronounce correctly. We're still alive, the bikes are still turning on, and we're still over 1,500 kilometers from Hanoi. Alrighty, it's Friday and it is, I think, day nine or kind of like lost track. We have there lost a track a bit of time. <laughs> uh, we're just leaving Dalat now. Um, we're heading towards the Ho Chi Minh Trail at long last. Mm. Um, there should be another waterfall up there, but we're not sure yet if we want a detour to see it. Uh, but yeah, it should be exciting. The roads should be uh, fairly peaceful. Yeah. Um, and we should be going downhill now because Dalat was pretty much the, uh, the peak of what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, and then we hit the, the flat lands and the temperature should go back up. So hopefully we won't be wearing you know, two, three layers of clothing anymore. Alrighty, we've got about six hours of riding ahead of us today, so uh, let's roll. We'll see you there. You. Nine days into our great trek across Vietnam, on the back of these 100cc fiery steel hogs. And after the amazing time we had in Dalat, it was time to steamroll on, as there was literally over a thousand kilometers of tarmac ahead of us. Unfortunately, a little more than a few kilometers out from Dalat, bike trouble struck. Dude, is that shit dripping out of that? Out of the engine. There was a stream of liquid, what looked like fuel, seeping from Mo's engine. With our little mechanical knowledge of bikes, we weren't too sure how serious the situation was. We could either turn around and head back to Dalat, or kickstart the bike and keep the gas flowing and face the situation head on and bomb towards the first town we could reach outside of Dalat. There was no going back. We bombed on through the Vietnamese countryside, leaving a trail of liquid from the bike in our wake. Leaving Dalat felt great. Yes, we had a great time, but it was only a glimmer of things to come. And as we cleared the Dalat city limit, it was full speed ahead. Twenty odd kilometers later, we pulled into a small town to get Mo's bike situation sorted. We just had ourselves a uh, bit of a, uh, a pit stop on a, at a roadside uh, cafe outside of Dalat because, uh, well, first we need to know where we're going, but Pat these bikes been giving him some hassles. It's leaking fuel or something at the bottom, and just starting it up has just been an absolute hassle, so... Uh, a few packs of chips later and some... Uh, a few packs of chips later and some uh, cheap beverages, and we're back on the road, uh, heading towards that Ho Chi Minh Trail. This is what we came to do. We had a full afternoon of riding. The roads were opening up and we had absolutely nowhere to be. Except on the road, with our hogs. Bombing to whatever happened to appear over the horizon. Around us the terrain changed from sandy battered gravel to lush green forestry as we enroached ourselves further into the central highlands of Vietnam. This was turning out to be a truly brilliant day of riding. Around every bend, photographic opportunities awaited us, and we couldn't help but to pull over to try and document it all. Oh. It's the time, 2.30. Yeah, so uh, we are uh, very high up the hill, and uh, we are going very fast. Uh, I've been riding for uh, only, only three hours, really. It's been an interesting uh, little... This last section has been very hilly and very bendy and all uphill. Uh, we're surrounded by feral dogs right now, so we're trying not to move at all. 
because we will probably be killed savagely. There's one right there. Seriously, it's off screen now, <laughs> but if it decides, we're dead. Uh, and it's got a little friend. Apparently they hunt in packs and they're very clever, so... No sudden movements, all right, John? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, uh... Oh, shit! <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, um, my backpack fell off the um, side of my bike and I lost Patney for a bit there. But I just wanted to mainly vlog because uh, riding up these... Yeah. Riding up these... Uh, riding up these um, hills, just on either side of the roads, is just these amazing... Um, it's just like so textured and layered. You'll have houses, you'll have trees, uh, the houses are scattered. Uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. So uh, the riding's been awesome today so far. But as Patty said, it's also been a little uh, a little uneasy. We've got to just, just got to keep our wits about us. We're trying to get to um, a place called Bon Matot. Bon Matot. Bon Matot. Bon Matot. It's quite far away because I know Dak Lak, which isn't where we're trying to get, is about 140 k's from here. And is that before it? That's before it. So wow. Chances are we probably won't reach this place today. It's uh, 2.30 uh, local time. Uh, hello. Yeah, it's okay. Come in. You can go through. Is this your house? <laughs> uh, what's your name? What's your name? Uh, oh, oh gosh. Okay, so we're, we're blocking someone's front yard here, so we're going to wrap this up and... Uh... Ah! Ching Mai! Chewing gum! Ching Mai! Ching Mai! Delicious! Are you sure for me? Yeah. It's... What's your name? Come on. So uh, that was a, a little, uh, just a strange little gum interaction we had there. He gave us some of his, uh, his uh, let's see this. He gave us some of his Wrigley's double mint, and in exchange, the, the I guy, gave him some happy dent. So that the, was a nice thing. The guy's pulled up in his uh, scooter next to us. He's trying to put it down, but it's just fallen over. So he's picked it back up, turned it around, and then it's kind of balancing on the stand. And then at one, at one point I thought he was going to pull out some a weapon or something. <laughs> He's given us the whole pack. And just pack. beat the shit. Yeah, I don't know. So we've got a whole pack of double mint. That was just some reason. After our run-in with the town's black market chewing gum trader, we hogged on. The roads quickly dampened our moods. They'd suddenly turned into dangerous, bumpy, rocky roads. And with 100 kilometers till the next town, our day was apparently turned on its head. With so much distance to cover, we simply couldn't afford to be riding at such a slow pace. Hey Mo, what did the guy order from the chocolate store? Rocky Road. Woohoo! We've got 110 kilometers left of this road. After riding for four or five hours on the rocky road of doom, we found ourselves riding in the middle of nowhere. A wise man might even use the term lost to describe our slightly dour situation. We didn't know how far we'd ridden or even how many kilometers we had until we reached the next town. We've basically been riding for most of the day now. We're, we have no idea where we are. We've just rolled into this village and there's pigs running around and chickens and wooden shacks and it really is in the middle of nowhere. Um, just gotta go ask someone. We're gonna try and ask somebody uh, to put the bikes to the side of the road. So, is it far? Yeah. Long. 
So we have a very, very long way to go. <laughs> um, the roads are not really helping us because they're very windy and they're often so bad that we can't really go past second gear and when we can it's only for a tiny spell. Um, so yeah, I don't think we'll reach the target today because we've got about another hour and a half of light and then we can't do any any night riding because it's uh, it's just too dangerous. Uh, there's no street lights at all. The motorbike lights are, you know, like basically like little flashlights taped onto the onto the bike. So it's going to be interesting. By the looks of things, we'd be hunting and deep frying a chicken and engine oil for tea that evening. It was either that or bomb on further and hope that the road situation drastically improved. Of course, with the way our luck was going today, that was never going to happen, as the rocky roads decided to evolve into sandy granite. And of course, the sandy granite turned into the beach. Thankfully, as sand smashed against our engines, we were spared a night in the jungles of Nam, as we hit a patch of deliciously smooth tarmac, and we bombed on as fast as we could go to the next truck stop town we came across. Okay, well, quite long down the hogs, and we've just been in the middle of absolutely nowhere. We've just um, gone through some uh, uh, we've just been going through villages and shitty roads pretty much the whole way and we've just come into this little town now and this this seems to be the only hotel in the place and we're just about to um, go in and um, get our Wi-Fi connection sort of <laughs> if there's no Wi-Fi we're not staying here no we'll go to the next town we'll go to the we'll go 100 k to the next town let's see how we go fingers crossed or it's a hotel. As we took that walk of hope, it was a seriously dire thought as to what we would do if we got turned around. In fact, we were almost too afraid to ask for a room in case we got told to get off whatever property we were walking around on. Hello. Photo taken. Oh. Okay, so um, we checked into that. Uh, the place that looked like a hotel, we actually managed to uh, get a room in, and I ended up with uh, <laughs> the room that looked like a cell. It's basically there's two tiers of uh, room pricing. <laughs> two uh, tiers. John went with the cheaper one, and he ended up getting a very prison cell looking uh, nook for the night. Oh, nook. So uh, I've invited him into my room for tonight because <laughs> I went with the uh, the luxury apartment. Well, truth be told, we were halfway through dinner, and I actually just subtly asked. No, I might actually just spoon with you might tonight. Bunk with me tonight. <laughs> well, anyway, so we dumped our crap at this um, probably one of the uh, less than stellar establishments we've stayed at so far. We tried to find a bit of food, and that was actually a lot harder than we thought it was going to be. One of the um, first restaurants we went to actually wasn't even a restaurant; it was just a bar. And then the uh, actual restaurant next to it had no food. <laughs> Who knew? But uh, we found a little market and we, uh, we went in there and it was, uh, it was mostly fruits and clothing mm. and some food that we couldn't really identify. There was a few like bits of meat like rotating on a spit and I came so close to like actually risking it and just because we were pretty hungry like a full day of riding. Mm. Um, we we're looking forward to a bit of tucker. Um, I got two oranges <laughs> from the market actually because I thought there was going to be no dinner. <laughs> So I got two two Nachis just in case. <laughs> Chow we get, down. We get out of the uh, market and we spot this little place across the road, and they did have a bit of pho, so we had a bit of noodle soup, which was quite good. It was nice and warm, mm. uh, and of course the ever popular three 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 triple three beer, export mm. quality. <laughs> um, these these three three threes they don't muck around. Five point three percent in in this cheeky little can of. 
of good beverage times. Of good times. <laughs> They're very good. They've been very popular on this trip. Yeah. So we're gonna finish these beers. Maybe buy a few more for the room. Um, and then we're hopefully gonna find a can of Mr. Chips or Slide <laughs> yeah, just to yeah. cap off the night. That would be pretty good. And tomorrow we're gonna have to wake up really early yeah. and get out of here and find the town we actually As soon as those like there. hens start, go, 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 we're out of here. Yeah. This town is very weird. This is a weird town. <laughs> <laughs> cool, until tomorrow. I'm John Vanderheide. And from the studio live tonight. <laughs> nah, nah. Yeah. Yeah. After our night in the prison cell dreary room we had called home, we were not so surprisingly back on the bikes early. And literally around the first bend, we were surprised by some truly amazing scenery. We planned to push on today with some 90 kilometers between us and Buen Matout, but again, around the very next corner, another amazing surprise awaited us. River views and an elephant taking a morning stroll. Brilliant start to the day. What else would be waiting for us down the road? Okay, so a herd of cows might not be that impressive, but they did hold us up for a few seconds and had laid some pretty impressive turds on the road which kept us alert. Straight and open roads meant that we could max out the engines on our hogs. And it also meant that we would make great time in getting to Buon Matel for an incredible lunchtime fiesta. Buongiorno! Yay, we made it! Very fast speed today, lots of, lots of, hey, got some friends here as well in the vlog. <laughs> um, We've just stopped for some pho. Um, as we came into the city, we are. Uh, we're absolutely dying for some food because we've been out the bikes for about four and a half hours. Um, and as we came in, we actually saw a KFC. Uh, it, it, I don't know why it's here or, you know, well, it is here. Um, <laughs> but we, we said no, we, let, let's get some uh, proper food. And um, mm. throughout this little pit stop, this side street cafe, well, getting some pho. Um, and we're drinking the most sweetest drink I think we've ever consumed. It's just, it's basically syrup. <laughs> Number one, I'm sure if you've been to Vietnam and you've had this, you're probably smiling right now. This yeah. was our first time and it was like... <laughs> it's almost like just drinking cordial without any water. That's, it's got, and it's got that thickness as well. So it probably actually just is a syrup that we've just consumed. It was probably meant to feed like five or six people at a party, but we had one each. So we're going to have enough sugar to keep us going. Very fast, I eat this afternoon, very fast, lots of sugar. Don't know why. Uh, so anyways, we are at the moment... Ah, we're in... Uh, B-U-O-N-M-A-T-H-U-O-T. Bonmatat. And we're heading towards the Ho Chi Minh Trail, finally. Um, so hopefully, I mean, we've still got about five and a half hours of riding left today, so... We're hoping to meet, uh, reach, sorry, uh, Bjorn Ho. Bjorn Ho. Um, yeah, um, it should be, I mean, the roads today have been really good. Uh, very easy to get to some of the highest speeds we've got to so far. Um, so if that continues, uh, I just noticed that little kid has a Ben 10 watch. That's amazing. Uh, Remember when we're in Ben 10? Ben 10 market. <laughs> but yeah, um, looks like there's some good riding coming up. And um, today has been very productive so far. John's just finishing his syrup there. But yeah, um, we're at a very busy intersection. Just having our little bowl of noodles. I'll try and give you guys a view. We're heading here.
Yon Ho? Kun Ho? Kun Ho. Kun Ho. Kun Ho. That way. Kun Ho. And far away? 40 cây. 40 cây số. try and keep pushing today and get as far up as we can and probably uh, if we find a decent enough hotel before it gets too dark we'll probably just stop for the day rather than being forced to stop. With enough daylight in the day and 40 kilometers to bomb till we reach the town of Eardrang, we thought it was the perfect opportunity to make a decent inroad on our quest to get across this country in the four weeks that we had planned. We couldn't, however, have envisioned that the morning swift ride would turn into an afternoon of testing and difficult conditions. An increasing amount of traffic on roads that were becoming ridiculously narrow meant that as grey clouds came over us, we were sitting ducks on a manky and damp, dour evening ride. We reached Eardrang tired and hungry, and with the town not being as big as we had envisioned, the only source of food was down at the night markets, where we ordered up the ladies' entire supply of a delicious, slightly unknown pancake. It has been a real testing, epic few days, and we're not even halfway through our journey. The trek so far has thrown us all sorts of surprises that we couldn't have thought up if we tried before we left home. With the Ho Chi Minh Highway still to get through, the thought of arriving in Hanoi feels like an entire lifetime away. But still, this is the experience we came for, and we're loving every second of it. He drives a 